Hi, College Street Elementary. This is Miss Morrow, and today I am here to show you some ways that you can do math and play games and have fun while you're at home during our social distancing experiment. So at home, you probably have a lot of these games already. You can play Uno. Uno's a great one for growing your brain. Um, you can play dominoes. You might even have dominoes that go all the way up to like 19 and 20, and you can play chicken foot with your dominoes. Candyland's a great one. Checkers. You'll notice on my checkerboard, I've numbered my checkerboard. All of the squares are numbered. It's hard to see it on the black squares. But on this one, I started with red. So when you see the numbers, they're the odd numbers. One, three, five, seven. And then when you go to the next number line, they're even. 10, 12, 14, 16. And then the next line's odd again. So this one, the pattern changes as you go. On this checkerboard, I numbered it a different way. I started with my black square in the corner, and then when I numbered and came down here, I started numbering backwards. So this checkerboard shows all of the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then when I go backwards, 10, 12, 14, 16. So this one was a different pattern. So even though it had the same numbers, they landed in different places because I changed my pattern. So you can add numbers to existing games. On your Candyland game, you can add numbers to the squares. And then while you're playing a game, you're learning some of the patterns with your numbers. For today's game, we're going to use a deck of cards, but I've taken some cards out. Can you tell which cards I've taken out of the deck? You might have noticed that my deck of cards is missing the Jack, Queens, and Kings and the Jokers. We're not going to use those for our game today. And for this first game that we're playing, we're also not using our tens. I took the tens out of the deck of cards. So I'm going to be using these cards, and I want to point out that I did keep my ace because I'm going to make my ace the number one. So I have one, two, three, four. So I have all the numbers one through nine in all of the suites for my card. So I'm going to shuffle my deck to get started with my game. The first game I'm going to teach you is called Make 10 Matching. So I shuffle up my deck and mix my cards up, and I'm going to deal them out flat on the table, and I'm going to have equal rows and equal columns. And I know my third graders out there are going equal rows and equal columns. We learned about that. You're making an array, and you would be right. I am making an array with my cards. Now, for this example, I'm not going to use all of my cards. If you're first just now learning this game for the first time, you might want to keep it with four rows of five and just use your first 20 cards. Then you can, as you play and you get better at this game, you can start using all your cards. Or if you're playing by yourself, you might want to keep it simple with just 20 cards. So to play this game, I'm going to flip a card over. I flipped over a two, and I'm trying to make a 10. So now I have a three. Do three and two make 10? No, they don't. Those are not big enough. So I'm going to flip them back over and try again. Oh, I flipped over a one. What do I need to go with one to make a 10? Let's see if I start at 10 and I take one away, I have nine left. So I need a nine to go with that one. Maybe it's next door. Oh, it is next door. I was so lucky. Nine and one make 10. Let's see if I can make another match. There's a two. Hmm, what makes a 10? I wonder if nine and two make 10. I'm gonna count on. If that's nine, that would be 10, 11. Oh, no, that's too big. That doesn't make a 10. Let me try another one. There's another, man, all of my twos are right together. Two and five, that doesn't make a 10. Let's see, there's a one. Hmm, I had a nine around there somewhere. Was that it? No, that's another one. That doesn't make a 10. There's a five. I thought I had a five somewhere else. Do I remember where it was? I don't remember. Now, when you first start playing this game, you do want to play where you're just flipping over two at a time. But as you get more advanced in this game, or if you want to change the rules up, you can change the rules so that any combination that makes 10 is still workable. So you could do three and two. You know, that makes a five. And then another five would make your 10. Also, if you're playing with younger kids, you can let them count 
the objects that are on the card so that they can count up to 10. That's not cheating, you're allowed to do that. Just make sure you don't count the tiny ones that are under the number because that just tells you this is the three of spades. You wanna count the spades that are the big ones. Same thing with the two of hearts. I'm not counting the little hearts, I'm counting the big hearts. So you can get in some counting practice on that too if you're playing with kids that are in kindergarten or lower grades. So you can play make 10 matching by matching two at a time, like we did. You can play make 10 matching by matching three at a time. You can play by yourself, or you can play with a brother or a sister. All right, the next game I'm gonna teach you is a second grade game, and it can go all the way up to fifth grade. This game uses the same deck of cards. I still don't have my jacks, queens, and kings, and I still don't have my tens. The deck goes in the middle, and you draw two cards, and your partner draws two cards. They flip their cards over, you flip your cards over. Everybody gets to see everybody's cards. And you can decide, you can keep them that way and make 94, or you can decide you wanna make 49. Your partner decides, does they, do they want it to be 93? Or do they want it to be 39? So your partner might decide they want 93, and you might decide you want 49. And that's perfectly okay. So you made 49, they made 93. And then together, you're gonna have to decide if you're gonna add or subtract those. Can I add or subtract 49 and 93? Well, right now, we know in second grade, we cannot subtract smaller numbers and then take away the bigger number. We're gonna learn how to do the smaller numbers, take away bigger numbers once we get to EJ Moss. That's for a while yet. So I'm gonna make this an addition problem. So I'm gonna do nine plus three. So nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'm gonna regroup my one. Four and one makes, hmm, I don't wanna add four and one first. I'm gonna add nine and one, because I just played that make 10 game. Nine and one makes 10, and four more is 14. If you and your partner both solve the problem and get the same answer, you're probably right, and you each get a point. If you and your partner did not get the same answer, y'all are gonna need to talk about it and figure out where the mistake was made. It's okay if you make a mistake. It just means neither of you get the point for that turn. This is a cooperation game. You're both trying to get the answer right. And then you keep going until you're out of cards and you see how many points that you have. So that game is just an addition and subtraction game. We played two cards at a time. If you're in third grade or older, you could do three cards at a time and practice adding with three numbers at a time to make that game even more advanced. All right, for the next game, I'm still using my deck of cards, but I'm going to add the tens into this game. This game is appropriate for third grade and up because this game is going to be using multiplication. So I'm shuffling my deck of cards and I'm mixing them up. Oops, a daisy. And I'm gonna put those in the middle. You play this game with a partner. Your partner draws two cards. You draw two cards. You both flip them over. Now, instead of doing an addition and subtraction game, we're gonna play multiplication more. So my cards show two times six. So you can work this out in your head or you can work this out on paper. I know six twice is 12, so I have 12. My partner has eight times nine. Do you know what eight times nine is? If you don't have it memorized, you can work it out on paper. You can draw a picture of an array. You could do eight groups and put nine in each group. So however you need to work it out, that's how you work it out. I do have eight times nine memorized. I know that it's 72. 72 is bigger than 12, so my partner wins all of the cards. Then they draw two cards, I draw two cards. We flip the cards over. Oh my goodness, I'm so gonna lose this game. I have one group of three, I only have three. Wah, wah, wah. And my partner has five groups of eight. I'm gonna switch that and do eight groups of five because I can count by fives so much easier. So that's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 40 is bigger than three, and they won again. 
and you keep playing until you run out of cards in the middle. The person at the end of the game that has the most cards would win that game. Now, you can play these games with cards. You can also play these games with dice. We play make 10 with dice all the time. You can use just a few dice or you can use a lot of dice. So if you wanna play the make 10 matching game and use dice instead of cards, you're looking for all your tens. There's a six and a four, that makes 10. There's a five and a four, that would be nine, and one more makes 10. So five, four, and one makes a 10. Did you see that? And let's see, if I have three plus three, that's six. I know that double, because I did a first grade number talk. So three plus three is six, and six and four, there's another 10. So you can use lots of dice to make 10. There's another six and four, that makes a 10. And uh-oh, that's five, six, seven. I only have seven left. So I had three dice left. And then your partner goes, and if they have less than three dice left, maybe they win that game. You can use your dice for that. You can also use your dice to do the addition and subtraction game that we just did. So you roll two dice. That could be 64 or 46. Your partner rolls two dice. That, well, it could be 44 or it could be 44. You don't get a choice on that one, do you? So you could choose to add 46 and 44, or you could choose to subtract 46 and 44. I'm gonna choose to subtract 46 minus 44. So six and four, that would be two. And four from four is zero, so my answer is two. So that same game that we played with the deck of cards, you could play with the dice. Now, you are limited if you use these dice because they just go to six. At school, we use dice that look like this. These are called decahedra dice. You don't have to have these at your house, but if you do, then you get all of the digits because they have zero, through nine, and you can make any number that you want using all of the digits. <coughs> if you play Dungeons and Dragons, or Magic the Gathering, or you have older brothers or sisters or parents that played that back in the day, you might have some of these dice around your house. You can get these dice at game stores, you can get them at Geek World and Tyler, Adventures in Learning, um, you can get them at the Dollar General, Walmart. You can even order them off Amazon, and then you don't even have to leave your house. The other thing that we do a lot of times is we use pieces from other games that we threw away. Maybe they got old or broken or we lost the other pieces because this one only has one left. Um, and we recycle and reuse those and make up our own games. So you can use pieces from other games to make up your own games at home. Your teachers... Sometimes we'll put dice in containers like this. So if you're playing at home and you don't want your dice flying all over the place, you can shake them and play your game by looking in the window at top. So those are some things you can do with the materials that you have at home. If you decide to play one of these games, please email your teacher or send her a message in Google Classroom or have your parents shoot her a text and be like, hey, we played this game today and let us know what you think. And if you like one of these games and you want to change it and make up your own game, we would love to hear how you did that. And you can send us a text or an email and say, hey, we changed the game and now it looks like this and it's so much fun. So we hope that you enjoy these games and we'll be posting more videos for fun things you can do while you're at home.